Hello, and welcome to Your Vote Counts, a public service program bringing local candidate interviews to you for the primary 2020 election. This is produced by Capital Community Television via remote technology in collaboration with the community groups of American Association of University Women, League of Women Voters of Marion and Polk Counties, four neighborhood associations from Salem, and the Salem City Club. For the nonpartisan contested races selected, all candidates were invited and all accepted. The questions were developed by the sponsoring groups and candidates did not receive them ahead of time. Candidates were asked to prepare a three minute opening statement telling about themselves, their qualifications and vision for the elected position. I am Laura Buell from the American Association of University Women and I would like to introduce Brad Nanke, running for the office of Salem City Council Ward 3, who will now begin his opening statement. Thank you, Laura. About 24 years ago, I was confronted with a problem in my neighborhood. The kids had been walking to our local school very close to fast-moving traffic because there weren't any sidewalks. My neighbors had supported a pedestrian safety bond measure to get those sidewalks. And after the bond passed, the city changed the plans to a significantly wider street. I researched it. Changes didn't make sense and would have taken the front yards from many of my neighbors. Like a good citizen, I wasn't happy about the situation and was determined to do something about it. And my name's Brad Nanke. I'm running for re-election as your Ward 3 Salem City Councilor. I moved to Salem 32 years ago where I met my wife, Denise, and we raised our son. Salem is our home. It's a wonderful place to live, work, and play. And with your vote, I'll use my experience and proven leadership skills to continue to be your voice and reflect your values to keep it that way. Our city council has been through many challenges during my time there, but the job of dealing with challenges continues. Challenges like homelessness, safe drinking water, transportation, infrastructure, and the city budget. And now we have a new challenge with COVID-19. Homelessness reached a crisis level in Salem recently. I've worked with our social service providers during my entire time on council. We're on track to greatly increase the number of beds and services for our most vulnerable. The homeless may have moved back into our parks for the time being, but we must not let our efforts lapse in our response to this crisis. What will that COVID-19 recovery look like? Will it be seasonal? Uh, seasonal? What will next year bring to us? The situation changes daily and it will continue to affect all of us. But we will make it through this crisis. I will use my relationships that I've built locally and at the state and federal government levels to work through this challenge. I will use the knowledge and experience I've gained to help move us through this recovery and a better sit tomorrow for Salem. City budget, much like your personal and business budget is and will continue to be strained. We need to make sure your tax dollars are used wisely and that we don't place additional burdens on our residents and businesses. I've chaired the city finance committee for 20 years and we'll be going into my 20th budget session. We've weathered tough budget years before and I'm willing to help lead us to make it through them again. Remember the problem with my neighbors in the street bond? Solution for me was to get involved. It led me to become a Salem city councilor 20 years ago and now to re-seek election to continue to deal with our challenges, new and old alike. By May 19th, you'll either mail or deliver your ballot. Before that happens, I value your support. Please visit my website, bradnanke.com, on ways you can help, using appropriate social distancing, of course, and most especially by voting for Brad Nanke for Salem City Councilor Ward 3, so that I can use my experience and proven leadership skills to help us make it through these challenges we all now face. Thank you. Many residents do not understand the role council persons play in our lives. Why should residents and voters be interested in this race? Well, excellent question. Local government is the, the government closest to the people. While a lot of people focus on national politics, it's your city councilor that has the ability to let you have chickens or not. Uh, affects your taxes uh, more significantly than what happens at the uh, the federal level. And uh, it affects our everyday lives, which is, you know, the benefit of being close to the people. I go to Fred Meyer or the grocery store and I may be 15 minutes or I may be an hour and a half because I am accessible to people and, and several times I'm, I'm there for a very long time. 
uh, talking through issues, uh, some which they may not understand. Budget tends to be really complicated. Um, criteria that we have to follow for land use um, sometimes doesn't make sense to a lot of people as well. And so I get the opportunity to to share what we can and cannot do based on higher levels of government as well. Okay, thank you. Next, what direction for the care of the homeless would you suggest taking into consideration? Oh, sorry. <laughs> what direction for the care of the homeless would you suggest taking into consideration business concerns and public safety? Well, and we, we've done a bit. The, uh, the homeless issue actually blossomed uh, significantly at the end of last year. But I've been working with um, all of our social service providers for, well, the entirety of my time on council. And we've been working to increase the number of beds we have available, uh, the amount of services we have available. We have a significant challenge right now where uh, with the emergency declaration, uh, we allowed the homeless to, to take up camp in both uh, Wallace Marine Park as well as Cascades Gateway Park. But as soon as that declaration is lifted, I'm assuming that that will um, not be an option for them again as well. The sit lie ordinance, uh, modified sit lie ordinance was put in place, which has some um, uh, items that have to be fulfilled before that can actually take effect. And, and we will be ready uh, with that as well to have uh, covered area, uh, toilets, uh, available hand washing. We have uh, the Union Gospel Mission that'll be coming online, a few other uh, locations as well to increase the number of beds. So we're ready to help those who want help. It's, it's the ones that aren't ready for that help that is one of our biggest problems. The, uh, the police had asked us several years ago uh, to start the uh, the process for the sit lie to deal with um, inappropriate behaviors. And it took us a long time to move that into play. I think it had a significant um, role in, in what we saw happen in our downtown over the last several months uh, with our homeless uh, living in really horrible conditions on the sidewalks, impacting our employers, impacting the employees and shoppers and our downtown has always been kind of tenuous and uh now with the COVID-19 uh pandemic in place those businesses are suffering even more so um, we really need to focus on the recovery efforts and make sure that as we come out of the emergency declaration that we're not immediately having a an issue with the homeless in the downtown area again. Okay, thank you. Next, what should the city be doing to co combat climate change? And do we need a Salem Climate Action Plan? And we've went around on that a few times. We have an environmental action plan. We've actually, as a city, been doing a wonderful job of reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, there's some people who uh, don't like the terminology. Um, I like to look at energy conservation as the same as greenhouse gas reduction. And a lot of people, you have to use the terminology um, that kind of triggers them to, uh, to modify their behaviors. As far as a formal plan, again, I think we're doing well with uh, the environmental action plan. Uh, our budget is gonna be stressed because of the COVID response and to divert a significant amount of funding to create a new plan when we have a plan that essentially is getting us towards the same direction, um, maybe premature now. Thank you. One of the elements discussed in the updating of the Salem Comprehensive Plan is complete neighborhoods. Can you explain or describe that concept? 
complete neighborhood is where you have access to, to those services that uh, you need in a neighborhood and to where people can um, not have to travel significant distance um, to uh, come by those groceries, uh, medical facilities, uh, transportation options uh, that are close by as well that could get you to, to other locations as well in a uh, in a more kind of mini community uh, that you see in a lot of other places around the world as well. Okay, thank you. Assuming there may be cuts in revenue and increases in needs, tell us your financial priorities for the city budget. And we will be facing that one. Our, our budget uh, schedule has been abbreviated, so it will be a, an interesting time coming up here in the next month. Our primary purpose is really emergency um, response through public safety. Um, we, we cannot let the social service providers uh, be cut to the extent that some may actually suggest they leverage those funds significantly. Uh, and those that we're trying to care for the most vulnerable uh, really rely on that service and and we need to make sure that 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 stays intact um, I'll be really interested to see how the uh, the budget is presented to us uh, and once we see where potential cuts may be made um, we'll give feedback to um, let's see how how would I say that to make sure that those services that uh, are most beneficial uh, remain uh, as near intact as possible and then identify some of those that may be able to be uh, to lessen uh, the uh, the budget in those areas for a limited period of time until we we make it through uh, this financial crisis very similar to what we did during the uh, the recession a little over 10 years ago as well been some really trying times in the budget in the past uh, we've made it through we'll we'll make it through again we'll be relying on all of the citizens to uh, to give us input as well along the way okay development and maintenance of infrastructure such as streets is important to the face of the community as well as its safety how do you plan to attend to this Typically, the, the larger transportation projects are through bond measures, uh, which is why I'm concerned with the, uh, the council uh, imposing the uh, operating fee on the water sewer bills. Uh, in my opinion, uh, I fear that may jeopardize some future bond measures. The uh, ongoing street maintenance is, is really funded by uh, gas taxes, uh, which are insufficient to do what we really need to on them. Um, our, our water, sewer, stormwater utilities are doing very well. Uh, I've been asking for relief uh, to some of our citizens uh, on, a, on their bills based on what the city can afford from that fund. And uh, we'll see as we move through uh, into the recovery phase of, of the COVID response, uh, what we're actually able to do on that. Our biggest infrastructure project um, and need is, is a third bridge across the river. I know there's been a lot of controversy uh, in that regard, but we had unanimous support by Polk County, Marion County, City of Kaiser and Salem uh, to move that forward. And it was really unfortunate that, that council last year elected to uh, terminate that process. So I'd like to see that kick back on. Um, it's something we desperately need. Okay, our solid waste issue still looms large. What is your understanding of this issue and what do you suggest? And we've went around on that a, a, a few times um, with the uh, 
the the garbage burner uh, near Brooks, the Covanta facility. And if you look at even Salem within ourselves, because we're in two different counties, Polk County residents pay pay less for their solid waste. The uh, the Marion County uh, residents pay more. We've went back and forth a couple of times to see uh, what options are available on uh, that front for us. The, one of the critical things right now is the uh, the recycling market with China actually uh, refusing to take all of our recyclables. Uh, our solid waste issues have expanded um, significantly as far as what to do with um, a lot of the waste people generate. Personally, I've always um, reduce to the extent possible the waste that we generate in our household. There's actually been some reports lately that because everyone is, is self-isolating, uh, the residential garbage load is, is uh, expanding and the, uh, the commercial is, is, is dropping off to a large extent. My, my garbage load has, has really been unchanged uh, and that's because of the way I, I purchase my products with minimal packaging um, and uh, and reuse those items that I'm able to. Um, we'll need to work through the uh, the issues with the Covana facility, and I look forward to working with Marion County on that um, because there's not a lot of time before uh, either um, an expansion is needed or or we change. Uh, something else in that process uh, to get us through the uh, the next several decades. We have time for just one very quick question more. Um, I know it's a complicated topic, but we don't have a lot of time left. Uh, what is your vision about the vitality of the downtown area? And actually, a lot of people don't realize it, but when I first came on council, downtown was in Ward 3. And so I, I represented that area and, and dealt with homeless issues down there 20 years ago. So homelessness is is nothing new. It's it's changed a little bit. But we're, we're starting to see more and more of a comeback in downtown. Um, I'd like to see some kind of an entertainment district, knowing that we, um, and we originally had 100 uh, units downtown was our goal, uh, and we've massively exceeded that. And so now as you add a residential component into a uh, a business environment as well as potential entertainment um, impacts, it's difficult. I, I would like to see us actually um, put in some kind of an entertainment district to, to up our nightlife. And so our, our kids stay here rather than going to uh, – to Portland to enjoy their nightlife. Um, the millennials have done a wonderful job of opening new and 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 really creative businesses downtown, and uh, I want to continue fostering that relationship uh, and provide resources so that uh, they can succeed. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Brad, for our interview today and for sharing your thoughts. Thank you so very much. It, it went very quickly. Yeah. Uh, thank you to Capital Community Television for the extensive efforts made to make this program happen. And thanks to you, the public, for watching in order to become an informed voter. If you have recently moved or need to register to vote, you have until April 28th to do so. Ballots will be mailed out beginning April 29th. Remember to vote because your vote counts. <laughs>